isn't it? It's like so much for my job as well. It's like acting. With, I know. She tries. She tries. <laughs> I'm Lucy Boynton, and I'm here with Mary Claire. Best part of my job. That's hard to narrow it down, but I think my favorite element of it is the transportive nature of that. I think it's the closest ex experience you can get to living in a completely different time and place. Being accepted as someone completely other than yourself, it's incredibly liberating. During the process of filming, it's hard to leave the character behind because there's usually such a small window of between getting home and then leaving for work the next day. So there's kind of no point in a way, and that's obviously something to try and navigate balancing with your own personal life. But I think the hardest thing to walk away from is like the, is the family unit that you build, especially when it's a particularly long shoot or a particularly stressful shoot. It's hard to leave those people. Um, and also the characters. I mean, I've been really lucky with the characters, especially this year that I've got to play. So there is a certain element of missing living in those shoes and feeling like those people. The thing that attracts me to a role is always different. It's always different for each project, but usually it comes from the first reading of the script and the initial impact of that. You know, when you're reading a script and you get this kind of adrenaline rush of, of inspiration or excitement, reading certain dialogue, and it's like, okay, I know I, what I would want to do with that. I know how I would want to unpack that scene, or I have no idea, and then the challenge is so thrilling. But I think great writing is obviously always the first kind of catalyst and entry point. And then the creatives involved, because I think there are certain creatives, whether that be writers or directors, that you know, especially if they have quite an idiosyncratic way of working, that you know you're in for something very different or you know, particularly inspiring. So I think the opportunity to get to work with those people is always, is always a huge pull and very exciting. The misconception that it's very glamorous or it's a lot of like swan swanning around, I guess, uh, is as inaccurate as it is. I can understand why that is the case because everyone gets to see the public and presentational side of it rather than the work. I think it's kind of okay that it's still a bit of a mystery industry and that people don't have a huge insight into what goes into the day to day if you're not in the industry because it's all about the kind of the facade that you present, the final project that you present. And so I think the less you know about the process and the less you know about what went into creating that and the reality of it all, the better in a way. I think the rejection is hardest in the sense of getting so close to being able to live a certain experience or live in a certain character's shoes and I think because in the audition process you get a taste of what that could be like with a certain character or a certain project and so it's the really hoping that you get to live in that world. Um, so then when you don't get it, it's kind of, it's hard having had that taste of it and, get, and having to walk away from it. I felt like a kind of a really um, fulfilling experience as a whole. Um, and I think there was obviously the exciting element of working with a brand like Chloe and for a fragrance that I really love. And then to complete that by ha sharing that experience with those women, I feel very, very lucky. It's so rare that you do stop and, and interrogate your relationship on a personal level with things like this. And I think, think it makes you slightly more aware of things so nuanced that you usually can take for granted, like fragrance, like scent. I think I'm drawn to floral scents. I mean, I think night blooming flowers are the most romantic mm -hmm. scent. And so like walking through LA and you smell the night blooming jasmine, I think is so beautiful and romantic. I've been really lucky in the sense of getting to work with a lot of really brilliant ensembles. I mean, especially recently I had the privilege of working with, like, in the same room, Hugh Laurie, Emma Thompson and Jim Broadbent. And I think just observing them and, like, how much fun they have with it and that there's no... I mean, they take the work incredibly seriously, but they don't take themselves very seriously. 
I've been lucky with the women in my life who I've been able to look up to and my sister has always been, been I'm so lucky to have such a clear kind of guide in life um, I feel incredibly lucky to have had her as a kind of role model in my life and I think I do there are many people close to me in my life and also just like artists um, a few kind of steps away that I look to for inspiration and motivation but more than anyone I think I look to my sister. It has to have gotten better just because of the conversations that are so prevalent now and that everyone is having you kind of can't get away with writing such simplified women anymore and if you have written it then no one I don't think wants to do it because they know they don't have to. There's still a much more vast landscape for men and I think we're still it's kind of unfortunately slow to catch up but it is happening and so you're so grateful for women. I mean like Michaela Cole and Britt Marling who are writing such brilliant, informative and textured pieces and kind of, I think, can then pave the way for lots, lots more um, kind of eclectic characters and a more interesting tapestry. I think trying to stay balanced often means very different things depending on the stage of work I'm in. During filming, that's kind of conserving energy is the priority of staying balanced um, and so that can take a very different form and I think that is again like for me personally it's seeking opportunities to just be kind of quiet and somewhat reclusive so that I don't know I, it's such a privilege to love your job, job so much and be able to be all consumed by it so it's kind of trying to stay in a healthy headspace while doing that and then I think the amount of travel that this work requires is another element that's important to try and maintain balance within. And I think as I get older, I'm realizing that more, looking around at my friends who are kind of putting down such um, strong roots in places. And I think this job kind of prevents that from happening. So I think as I grow up and grow, that will take on different forms of what balance looks like. And I think at the moment it's kind of, yeah, kind of staying tethered with my friends and family and feeling as often as I can more kind of rooted in that world. Are, are your roots, do you see them as, as here? Oh, hell yeah. London is home. Always has been. I think always will be. Mm.